I'm a researcher and a faculty member at Shristi Institute of Art, Design, and Technology um, in Yelanka. Um, and I do lead a program called as Human Centered Design uh, for Masters, which is exploring interaction design, design of digital tools and technologies. But today I will be talking about uh, how design limits, the limits of design, uh, through the case of uh, you know, self quantification and sexual and reproductive health, because that's one of my areas of work. So design is basically a Herbert Simon defined design um, as, a, as, a, as a tool or, an, or as a method that you can use to move from current state to a preferred state, right? as a means to an end. And these days, design thinking is everywhere. You have a complex problem, throw design thinking at it, or throw some designers at it, it'll be solved like that. So that seems to be, that seems to be the ideal uh, everywhere that I see. And when I say design, I, I mean engineering design, technology design, creative design, all of it together. You know, I mix them all in one bracket. But let's see, let's try to uh, unpack how design limits. So the idea, the central idea that I'm going to talk about is uh, it, that design creates more problem than it can solve, ever. You know, design is considered to be a creative problem solving methodology, but it creates more problem in most cases. What are the problems it creates that, that designers never think about is that design disciplines, right? It, it excludes, and it usually, in most cases, perpetuates status quo, harmful status quo, right? So, um, you all have Fitbits, right? I don't use one, but I'm sure many, quite a few of you use Fitbits or know what is a Fitbit. These are these devices that you wear, and it, it has a pedometer, and you can track how fast or how, how many calories you're burning and stuff like that. This is an advertisement for one, one such devices. I can't read the name. I think it's my fitness tracker or something, which you wear, and then it measures your calories burnt and, and all, that, all that healthy. It makes you be fit, right? It supports you to be fit and healthy. So what's wrong with this? What's wrong with this image? Right? Do you know this image? This ad was put in London Metro and it was banned because of the harmful body images that it portrays for teenage young girls because they were forced to have a beach-ready body, which means that they have to have thigh gaps and whatnot and whatnot. Right? So, isn't it the same? No, don't just look at the advertisement. Look at what it is telling you when you're using that device. It's telling you, and Fitbit, I think, has a tagline, if I'm not right, says that this will be the better you. Be a better you or something like that, or a fitter you. So it's telling you that there is only one body type allowed to live. Right? If there's only one kind of fitness. There's only one kind of you know, uh, being alive, and that's our way. Right? So this is what design does, when design is not thought through, right? So design disciplines, design disciplines bodies, and design disciplines lives. So what are the limits of such thinking is you have this. This is not a joke. It's an actual product you can buy. It's illegal in India because sex toys are illegal in India. But you could, if you're in the UK, you can buy this. It's a pedometer for your penis, right? Great, right? So, you know, you want to measure your sexual performance, brag about it, wear a pedometer. <laughs> Have fun. But most likely it'll be just you, not your partner. <laughs> so, now I wonder, you know, I, I move about, and we all have seen this, and this is uh, an image taken from Hindu, and there's an article of, about this, about how in urban India, in rural India, there are these lot of these uh, unhealthy practices about sexual health. Swapna dosh, which is, you know, night falls, is considered to be a bad thing for you, and then come to me, pay me, and I'll give you some herbs, and you can get rid of it, which is a natural phenomenon, right? So. Do you see any difference between this and this? No. They both perpetuate harmful myths about sex and sexual performance and sexual health. Right? So design again disciplines. But it also excludes, because this is obviously designed by men for men. Right? Reducing sexual performance to pedometers or thirsts. And that's just 
just the men's conceptualization of what sexual pleasure is, and only for men, right? So this is designed by men for men. Now let's look at what happens when design, men design products for women. It's going to be a disaster. <laughs> so uh, again, taking, um, so, and, and that too, menstrual and reproductive health products, right? Apps for tracking periods. And forget about, so the first, and this is a great article in Atlantic about how self-tracking apps uh, exclude women, and you should take a look at this. But it's amazing, so right from the layers of visual design, pink, women, let's throw in some pink, let's throw in some flowers, you know, make it appealing to them, right? But, but if you dig a, dig a layer deeper, it's amazing. So they are, they are helping women to track these and sending messages to their husbands or their partners, right? Why? Why are they enabling a, a, a female body, you know, uh, which is kind of bound and owned by a female, access to women, men about it, right? Again, de design in this way, disciplines, gives a control to more powerful people than the marginalized, and it excludes, right? Women have been tracking menstrual cycles over the decades and ages before apps came, right? Have these designers studied these? Studied these practices? I don't think so. So uh, design in that sense also uh, excludes, you know. So let's look at what would happen if a woman is part of a team that, or leads a team that designs, um, you know, something about a uh, reproductive health product. So this is a very interesting product uh, in the Silicon Valley called as My.Flow. And the website is Track My Flow. So this is a product, in, in the US they use tampons, right? How many men here know what's a tampoon? Super. Do you know why Indian women don't wear tampoon and prefer the pads? No? Because virginity, yay, you have to be virgin, because if you insert a time, tampoon, your hymen will be most likely be broken, right? So <laughs> this is a product in, um, in the US, and it has a smart sensor that this woman scientist developed, and she's now productizing it, which detects when the tampoon is filled up, so that you can change it. It sends an alarm to your smartphone. It is an app, and you can, it gives you uh, details about when to change. It's right time to change, or you have to change in the next 15 minutes, so women can change the tampoons. It's great also because they have done a lot of research. They've talked to women and have you know, kind of worked with them and produced this. Because tampoons should not be left for longer inside the vagina because it creates infection, right? But one of the key things they all talk about, in the video especially, and when you look at the research, is that one of the key fears that they're trying to address is the fear of the stain. Sab daag achche hai, menstruation ke daag bilkul nahi achche. And not to be seen, they're bad, right? So despite great care, despite human-centered approaches, despite working with women, despite led by a woman, design also perpetuates status quo. Right? They don't inquire into why is that stain so bad? Why is it so stressful for women? It's not the mistake of women, mind you, but it's a society. How many you know, women here have been terrified by the teasing in schools when your skirt got red? Right? So this is something that you know, design as a product, as a system, never never engages, and that is why I believe that design actually perpetuates status quo, right? Let's take a look at what happens when design is done differently. So I call it as designing with a stress on ING, which means that design is never complete, you know, and it doesn't matter who designs, who's the designer, it's never complete, it's a continuous process. When you look at that, let's see what happens, okay? So this is a, a phenomenal work by an organization in Udaipur called as jatansansthan.org. It was started by a very good friend, who has now become a very good friend, called as Lakshmi Murthy, who is a design graduate from NID. And she has been working in rural Udaipur for 25 years, counting. And her main focus has been to develop tools and training 
to empower adolescent girls and boys in rural Udaipur around sexual and reproductive health rights. So those bracelets that you see are basically self-quantifying bracelets. But it, the way that it is made and worn is a group of adolescent girls are all made set around, you know, and they have these beads, yellow and red beads. Each one confesses how many days do they menstruate and what are the gaps between those days, right? So they discuss about openly about their menstrual cycle and they pick up the red beads for the number of days they menstruate and the yellow beads for the periods in between and make their own bands and wear it. Now, the making of the band is just one more excuse to talk about this openly. And mind you, these are the communities where women, uh, girls are married, at, and girls and boys are married at the age of four, five, eight, ten. Child marriage is rampant, right? These are tribal communities, um, marginalized communities in the hills of around Udaipur. Recently, uh, they have also, Lakshmi has started making what is called as Uger pads. Uh, pads. Uger in, in, um, in Mawadi is uh, rising. Okay? So these are cotton pads, because what has happened is that the sanitary napkins have been invading the villages, and these are very harmful for many reasons, especially in rural parts, because these uh, girls don't have money to buy this, or they are very, very shy to ask for money. So they buy one pad and they use it for long, which is very harmful because it has harmful chemicals. This is what I bought when I was there. I just came from Udaipur, by the way, two weeks. I'll tell you what I did there. So this is the newest form of the pad. So this is how you insert. And these are, for, these are towels for heavy flows. This is the one for regular flows. Okay? So these are the ones for heavy flows. Now, guess why this inner lining is white? Because as with any excretion of the body, you need to be aware of what color is it. You need to see it so that you know if it is an infection or not. When my daughter, who is now three years old, was you know, about, you know, just born, there's a beautiful database, beautiful, if you think it's beautiful, where people have contributed their uh, children's diapers with poop inside that is color-coded, which tells you if this is the color of the poop, then it means that your baby has this, like diarrhea, cold, fever, or healthy. It's all based on color of poop. Similarly, the color of menstrual discharge has to be seen, so it has to be white. Right? Now, Lakshmi and Uger uh, Foundation have had multiple pushback from corporates who buy these for their CSR, you know, make this color dark. And she says, no way. You don't buy it from me. But I'm not making this dark in any way. Because it's not just about make, you know, kind of uh, tracking and observing, but it's also about you have to wash these and dry it in the sun. So when you do that, it becomes an object that is out there, visible, challenging the status quo about not talking about menstruation in all of our homes, not just in the villages. Villages, they talk more openly. Urban homes, we don't talk about it. So this, is, this has evolved over 25 years of work with organizations and people, right? This has not come like that. So this is what I call as designing. Now let's... Uh, I'll just show you a couple of examples of what we did. Um, every year, I take my students there um, for two weeks. The project um, course is called as Future of Interaction Design. And I do believe that the future of design has to be in such spaces rather than in you know, creating conceptual products that nobody would ever use. Right? So uh, this time, uh, I took a group of 15 students, and we worked with rural adolescent you know. Um, coming from the villages around Udaipur for five days and five nights. And one of the things that we did is we stitched these patch by our hand. You know, both boys and girls, but this is an image where I have mostly boys, but one girl, that's my daughter. So I took her too, I usually do. And we stitched these patch, right? So all these three boys are married. And they are 16 years old, 17 years old, and one is 19 years old. They were married, they were engaged when they were two or four years old, and they got married 
now about a couple of years back, and they had to fail because they, they married. So they had to drop a year, they had to fail. So education you know, and, and career is, doesn't matter so much as getting married early. Now, they were here sitting with my students, stitching, and what were the discussions that happened? What is menstruation? Why it has to be white? Who will you give this for? So all the boys who stitched, their question was, I also got one, I stitched one, I got it to my wife. The question was, who will you give this? Wives, girlfriends, sisters, and how will you talk about this? So the activity of making a menstrual pad reusable, through that, we could break down barriers and talk about menstruation, we could talk about ecology, we could talk about difference between cotton pads and cotton linings and sanitary napkins, which are plastic. We could all do this by making a pad, which is what essentially is design. So design is all about making. So if you can look at design as a method that can bring in people and have a conversation rather, then it, is, it gets more interesting. Let's watch a video first and then I'll tell you what happened. Kya bolta tu? Hey. Kya main bolu? Sun. Suna. Sapna dosh hua hai yaar. Are chhod na. Ye to gila sapna hai yaar. Ghabraye nahi, hichki chahe nahi, hakim ko bataye nahi aur kya? Hey. Kya bolta tu? ए क्या मैं बोलूं फोन देखूं गूगल करूं इसे क्या पूछ लूं आखिर है क्या मामला अरे थैली तो भरता है बाहर निकलता है छड़ी तो गीला है और क्या ए सो दिस एंटायर सो दो दो आर माय स्टूडेंट स्टूडेंट्स so we, along with the students, uh, wrote this song together. The, the punchline was mine, by the way, because I'm a huge fan of 90s music. Um, so one of the key things in villages and in urban is something called as nightfall. And Swapna Dosh, it's called as Swapna Dosh, which is, it's not a dosh, it's not a mistake. So we were also, the, the, what we're exploring is how do we go back to our communities and make these, uh, you know, something that can use something that can, we can, so we can talk to them, you know. So this is something that emerged, but it, it has to work in a larger ecosystem of the organizations, and we are working on how to take, take this forward. But when things come together, when people, different kind of people come together, and you are facilitating it in the right way, you know, something emerges. So, back to my premise, this is what design thinking is, as a means to an end. But I would rather say that designing is more, more fruitful, more important to the kind of complex problems that we are encountering. It's a process that never ends, and it's something that you have to constantly explore collaboratively. You can't say that I'll design something and everybody will use. You have to go back to the community, work with the community like Lakshmi did for 25 years, and develop something over time. So my argument for designing is that it has to be located, as in with the community, and collaborative, uh, and it has to undiscipline, it has to include, and it has to challenge status quo, right? So, we, you know, a couple of years back, I came across this article, I think it was in, in um, Wired magazine, that somebody is arguing that wearables need to get under the skin, right? Now, my kind of leaving message is, if we don't consider design as designing, then we'll be stuck with this. Thank you.